Hello and welcome. I'm Kristen at KristenWombeck.com and I am here to help you succeed in life and the marketplace. I have some Evernote tips for you today. I'm going to teach you how to make a table and move a table within your Evernote. Okay, so let's get going. I'm going to share my screen. Okay. Okay, there we are. We are ready and I'm up in the corner. <laughs> okay, I'm going to pull up my Evernote. Let me make it really wide so that you can see it. There we go. Here we are. I don't want it that wide. So I want you to be able to see what I'm doing here and I'll try to move slowly for those of you that just need a little extra technical help. Okay, so we're going to learn today how to make and move tables. I'm going to answer a couple questions. How I use tables and what can't go into the table and how to move a table. Very easy for you to do that way. You can build your own templates. Okay, let's go. How to make a table. Super easy here. I'm going to grab a new note all the way to the left. New note. There we go. Brand new note. I always start with the date and the title. How to make a table. Yay! And there you are. So what you do is up here is your, your add the little blue plus sign where it says insert. You tag that there. And there is all of the features that you have available. Tables are available in both free and paid accounts. And then you go right here to a table. Dun, dun, dun. Pretty simple. I think you already knew that. You just needed to know how to move in and out. So that is how you move a table. Now, let me go back to my notes. There we go. How you move a table right there. I'm going to go back to my notes. It's easier to work in from my notes. So you know how to move a table. Very simple. Okay, and the purposes I use for tables is framing an organization. As you can see in my notes here, they're framed, they're organized. It makes it easier for me to keep them orderly. My notes and my templates is when I frame them. Okay, also what else I do is I frame photos, screenshots, and my sticker photos. So what do you mean by sticker photos? When you are using in sort options and view options, I'm using snippets. That's what I always use. That's what I choose to use. And as you can see, this is a snippet view. And these are going to show you these here. So it takes the very first photo, photo that you drop into your Evernote, the very first one, and it puts it as the snippet view. So when I use the snippet view, that just helps me visually organize my notes. Okay. So that's why I do that. So when I frame it, let me go ahead and frame photos. So photos can like take up your entire note and then you have to size them. So if you frame them within a table, it helps to keep them organized. And let me show you how I do that. Okay. So there we go. Let's go ahead and make my brand new one here. And we're going to do the same thing. And we're going to drag and drop a photo and see it's contained within the table. And because on that new note, it was the very first photo I dropped in, it becomes my snippet in the snippet view. So you can see how that works. It's how I organize them. There you go. And that's how I organize my
photos within my templates and keep them well in check. Okay. There we go. Aren't those the cutest? Those are little snippet views that I made for my brand new planners. Okay, let me get back to my notes here. Oh, color hide, lighting and organization. So right here, see this little drop down arrow, this gray arrow. If you click that, it shows you all the different things that you can do with in a table. You can change the color of the table. You can set the note width and the window width. So when I am describing window width, there you go. So there's the window that it's within. I can expand it here and it becomes large. Okay, see, there's the window width. Window width, note width, so that makes a difference. The window width and the note, note width makes a difference according to devices. So I'm sitting on a large Mac monitor right now and explaining to you. So using the window width makes it easier when making a video. But for instance, if I'm going to take my grocery list on my phone, then I'm going to want to make it window view to be the note view so that it sizes appropriately. Okay, so, and you can color coordinate it. Now let me show you one thing over here. When these sections or tool, they're not a toolbar, but I call them a toolbar, the bars of a note. So see how I highlighted that? So bars of the note, if you use this little drop down arrow, then you can merge your cells. So you can merge the cells in a note and that helps you to, there you go. See what emerge does? It just actually brings some highlighting in another way that you can organize your tables. It's absolutely wonderful. Let me check my notes, color hiding, lighting. And then for blocking my journaling and writing and using divider lines. Let me show you how I do that. So since I am a writer, I'm going to insert a divider line. Doot, there it goes. So it's good for dividing. It's good for breaking it up. And one thing that's really good about those lines is that you can write and make notes and you can actually organize them with your divider line. It's just another way. Mm -hmm. See, and let me do it again. Divider line. So those are in other areas that you can put in to break up the little table. Cause then I have this entire table right here that I can work from. Mm -hmm. There you are. Okay, back to my notes here, blocking, journaling, and writing and using divider line. Writing, okay, adding and deleting row columns so that you can do in a table. So if you come up here to your bar and you see that little dot, here we go, I can add a table right there. And there it is. And I can change the width right there. Oh, right. Let me make you another one. So I just put my cursor right up there and the little blue plus sign. And then there you go. You can make your tables. Now, what happens if you go, oh, I've decided I don't want a table. You also hit the little drop down arrow and you go back to the bottom and you can remove rows and columns. So columns are going up and down. Rows are going from side to side across. So I want to remove a column, okay? Or you can make a column and you can delete a column. So columns go up and down and rows go side to side. <laughs> it's amazing how long it takes to, to learn those. There you are. There you go. Now here, let me show you this, what else that you can do in the table. 
hit your drop down see here where it says align to the center what it means is that any text that you have text or photo in your is going to align to the center there we go come on there it is there it is align to the center so you're just setting it and organizing it right there okay framing width size i already showed you that making an outline that's another reason that i use in my tables is to make an outline let me show you how i use that so i have a um, template that i made for podcasting because I have a podcast and I also sell the template to help keep me organized so I wanted to walk you through this and show you how many tables that I use to organize that to publish an episode so I I actually insert a table here to tell myself to put this the sticker in the the photo of that here's where my headers are i have them color coordinated as far as episodes research where i put screenshots i make a lot of screenshots i have a feeling that you do too that's another thing that i pop in to my tables all the time and then uh you cannot put a taskbar within the inside of a table so I actually make up my own taskbar you can use checklists numeral and bullet lists within a time frame but if I want to set up and make my own taskbar then I use the emojis to do that and there's guest invite and see here's my huge checklist when I make an episode like 52 checklists there's a lot to do when you're making a podcast and I keep that contained within a table and that is how that works there you go so I think let me go back all right framing lists and checklists I showed you how to do that code blocks is another thing that you can pop into your table a code block you cannot change the size of the the text um, it's blocked in there so it's great for making highlights and notes and like when I sell a template I will put things in code blocks in red text meaning that this is instruction so lots of different ways that you can use a code book again what can't go into the table is a table in the table it would be nice but you can't put a table into a table let me show you here see this tells you what you can and can't put inside a table you can't put a task bar and you can't put a table in a table <laughs> it'd be nice if you could but you can actually um, make um, with the divider bars and the code block you can get around the point of making a table in the table now how to move a table and why so tables are reusable so I'm going to show you here I showed you in my podcast but I'm going to go back to my podcast template so this particular table here like guest invite I would use that again and again and again so if you come to the top of the table and see the little four in the square there if you highlight that not the X's <laughs> that makes the plus signs makes make you another row or column but you want to highlight that little square right here with the four dots when you highlight that it highlights it all in blue that means you can copy you want to move your cursor you want to right click and that you would copy it and it will copy the entire table so it's very useful there we go very useful I can come over here right click and you paste it Ta -da! so it's great for moving reusable tables that you use again and again let me give you another example on how to move it so in my Christmas planners of course and recipe planners I have grocery lists now grocery lists when you go to the store you're usually 
picking up bread, eggs, milk, butter, wine, <laughs> consistently. So those kind of things would be on your grocery list and you don't need to type them out every week. That's the reason for copying it. So let's copy this grocery list. Right click, copy it, and we're gonna stick it in our template up here. Dun, dun, dun. Let me move it up. And you right click and you hit paste. And there you go. You can actually move your grocery store list all around in any templates. I have phone templates. I have templates for shopping. And so that's another way that you can use your tables and you can make them and move them to use them again and again. There we go. Did I answer everything? Mm -hmm. How to move grocery store list. There we go. That was pretty simple. See, it wasn't very difficult, was it? So we learned how to make a table, the purposes for making the tables, and what, how I use them in your building of your templates, how to move them and copy and paste them so that your reoccurring lists, checklists, and items within the table, you can just move your furniture around in Evernote. Well, thank you so much. I hope I answered your questions for you. If you have any questions or comments, make sure you subscribe and hit like on the video. And I'd love to answer your questions. You have a great day. Um, the planners that I use, you can go, which planner did you use, Kristen? So I highlighted my Sugar Plum Fairy Christmas planner, and I also highlighted my podcast episode planner. Okay, I'll leave those links in the description below. You have a great day, and I look forward to speaking with you again soon. I'm going to stop my share and bid you a good day. I'm Kristen Wambach at kristenwambach.com, and I love Evernote as well. Bye now.